Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today we're going to be doing a benchmarking video. We're going to be comparing processors from Exynos, Snapdragon and Dimensity, but not just the normal CPU or GPU. We're going to be looking at ray tracing. We're going to be using a new benchmark that measures the ray tracing ability of these processors. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so benchmarks give us a metric by which we can measure the peak performance of a mobile device. And normally we have, you know, benchmarks for CPU and GPU, you know, kind of Geekbench and 3D Mark and 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 there are several others. Okay, but areas where we're kind of missing good benchmarks are machine learning and in this new ray tracing technology that appears in the processors. Now, Basemark, a company that makes uh, benchmarks for both CPU and GPU, also now have a ray tracing benchmark. It's called Vitro, and it's the world's first ray tracing enabled benchmark. And it tests hardware accelerated ray tracing. Uh, exactly the same content is done on every single run and the same workload is used on every single platform. It does things like ray trace reflections. It does image based lighting, ground truth, ambient occlusion, uh, temporal anti-aliasing. If you understand all those things from a graphics point of view, it covers all of the bases basically. And when we're talking about ray tracing, we're talking about pictures like this lovely one here. Of course, here you can see all the reflections and this is not just kind of a mask that's put over this uh, kind of globe here and the, the artist has drawn it knowing what's going to be behind. This is actually done by ray tracing and you can see the shadows and the lighting and all this kind of stuff that's going on here. The, the stuff on the pillars here. This is all happening in real time with this new ray tracing hardware that we have on smartphones. And here's another example of one. Look at the reflections in here, the soft shadows, okay, that little candle flame going over there, the light reflecting and, you know, just in here refracting in the glass and all this kind of this is what happens when you have ray tracing on mobile. Okay, now of course there are some requirements to get this to work. So you need to have Android 12 or higher and the device you're testing needs to have uh, Vulkan 1.1 or greater support. It needs to of course have Vulkan ray tracing enabled both in the GPU and in the driver. It needs at least three gigabytes of a unified uh, memory. So that's memory that the GPU can get access to, which means it works with the Snapdragon 8 generation 2. It works with the Exynos 2200. It works with the Dimensity 9200, but it won't work with the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1, nor will it work with the Dimensity 9000. Okay, so here's our first benchmark. Now you get three figures per device. I've started here with the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And that's what's interesting here, because this is last year's uh, Samsung Galaxy. We're expecting a new one to appear very, very soon. If you're interested in getting $50 off, do look at the link in the description below and join the Samsung Reserve Program. Now this one, of course, got the Exynos 2200, has the AMD based um, a GPU in it. Uh, and here we get three figures for it. As I said, you get the, the, the average, the maximum and minimum. So the average during the test was 21.6 frames per second. The maximum it kind of peaked at was 30 frames a second. And depending on how hard everything was going there, it dropped down to 16.4 frames a second. So that was last year's device. Now the question is this, the new Snapdragon 8 Generation 2, will that do better than worse than last year's Exynos? And the results are quite surprising. In fact, it does worse. So the average frame rate was 17.6 frames per second. It maxed out at 27 frames per second and it dropped down in the hardest parts to 13.3 frames a second. So while the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 does support ray tracing, uh, it doesn't do it as well as last year's Exynos processor, which I find quite surprising. However, the next result you're going to find even more surprising. So now we're going to look at the Vivo X90 Pro, which got the Dimensity 9200, which means it's got the Armali Immortalis GPU in it. Of course, that supports ray tracing. And what are the numbers? Well, look at this. So the average is 31 frames a second. So significantly better than the 17.6 from the uh, Snapdragon and significantly better than the Exynos 2200. It maxed out at 73, so way out there. So there are obviously some scenes it did very, very well at. And even when it struggled with the hardest scenes, it only dropped down to 20 frames a second, which was better than the average from the Snapdragon and very close to the average for the Exynos 2200. So according to the Basemark in vitro ray tracing benchmark, 
the Immortalis GPU is certainly the best GPU at doing ray tracing at the moment. Now one other last graph to look at here, and this is the uh, stress test, what happens over multiple runs. Now here we're testing the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with the Red Magic 8 Pro, which has the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 in it, and the fan is off because it's a gaming phone. The fan is off in the Red Magic uh, 8 Pro. And what do we see? Well, of course, the Exynos did better overall. We know that. And it does very, very well for repeated runs of the test right up in here until the 17th test. Then the thermals just get too much and it kind of drops out here, dropping down to 10 frames per second average after all these test runs. The uh, Snapdragon uh, kind of did well for the first couple of runs and it dips, it recovers, it dips, it recovers, and then it kind of levels out here after 10 runs or so at just under 15 frames a second. And it seems to stay that way all the way through the test run. So, of course, that's partly to do with the thermals of each individual device, the thermals of the Red Magic 8 Pro, the thermals of the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, but it also gives us an indication here that maybe the Exynos has a, a thermal problem when it gets towards the end there. We have more testing obviously needed, especially now we've got Dimensity 9200 devices to see what they do as well. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. You can follow me on Twitter, on Mastodon, and on Instagram. The handles are all here on the screen. Uh, tell me what you think of ray tracing on mobile. What do you think of what it means for the future of gaming? I'll be interested in reading your comments below. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.